This is Jeremy Clark of JeremyBytes.com, and today we're going to continue our discussion of C-sharp delegates. This time, we're going to look at the built-in delegate type action and also see the multicast capabilities that delegates have. As a reminder, a delegate is a type that defines a method signature. So rather than having a type with data and behavior like we're used to with classes, a delegate is just a method signature. So the parameters that it requires and the return type that it returns. So why do we care about delegates? Well, first is they help us decouple our code. We've seen in previous examples how we can extend a class without modifying it by providing a delegate as a parameter to one of our methods. And when we are using delegates as parameters, that means we're passing methods as parameters to other methods. And again, in the functional programming world, these are known as higher order functions, functions that take other functions as parameters. Now today we're going to be looking at multicast capabilities. That allows us to run multiple methods by invoking a single delegate. So let's jump over to our code and see how we do that. So here we are in Visual Studio. And as a reminder where we left off, let's run our application. So here on the left-hand side, we have a collection of person objects. And then in the middle, we have some actions we can perform. So right now we have our string handling implemented. So if we click our process data button for default, it's going to give us the default to string, which is first name space last name. If we choose last name, it'll give us the last name to uppercase. The first name will give us first name to lowercase. And full name will give us the last name comma first name. And we're making this selection at runtime based on delegates. But we do have another option as well. We have an action section, and these are gonna perform some kind of action on our list. So for example, if we ask for average rating, we'll calculate the average of the ratings property from our list and output that to our output box. For the earliest start date, we're gonna locate the item on our list that has the earliest start date and output that to our output list. For best commander, we'll get the last name property of the person with the highest rating and show that in a message box. And finally, first letters. For this, we'll take the first letter of the last name for each item in our list and put that in our output window. Now, by describing this, two things come to mind. First, all of these actions perform something on the list, so we need to look at the entire collection of items. Second, there's no return type. Instead, we're performing some kind of work, either putting something into the output box, popping open a message window, or writing to our output window. So let's think about how we can do this. Let's open up our code behind. And when we're doing our string handling, we were working with func of person string. And as a reminder, let's go back to help. And here's the func that we're using, func of t, t result. So this takes one parameter, and has a return value. But we don't need a return value. Well, it turns out func of t has a sibling called action. So if we look up action of t, we'll see that this is a delegate that takes one parameter and returns void. So there's no return value. And action is one of those items that we got with .NET 3.5. And again, with .NET 3.5, we could have up to four parameters in our action. And with .NET 4.0, we can go all the way up to 16 parameters. And again, if you're creating methods with 16 parameters, you might want to ask a friend to take a look at it. Now, before I actually add this action to our code, let's do a little bit of housekeeping in our button click event handler. What we have now is based on those string handling routines. Now, I don't want to run this all the time just when we have that expander open. So we have something called string expander. And if it is expanded, then we'll go ahead and run this block of code that we've been running. Otherwise, if our action expander is expanded, we'll run some other code. Now, before I create a variable based on action, let's think about what our delegate would look like if we were to build a custom one. So this would be public delegate void, since we don't have any return type, and we'll call this people action and this would take a list of person as a parameter. And again, we do need the list because we're doing things like calculating averages 
getting the earliest values, finding the greatest value for the rating, and getting part of everybody's last name. Now we don't want to create a custom delegate, so how would we do this with action? Now again, we're going to be using this one, action of t, that just takes one parameter. Well, what's our parameter? Well, it's a list of person. And so we end up with a nested generic. So we have an action of list of person. And this conforms to the same signature as this custom people action because it takes a list of person as a parameter and returns void. So let's just create a variable called act on people and we'll comment out this custom type because we don't need to use it. So now that we have this variable, let's assign something to it. And just like we did our assign delegate before, we'll create an assign action method where we can do this. And as a reminder, when we called assign delegate, we used a lambda expression as a value to assign to our format person variable. So let's assign something to our act on people variable. Now for this, rather than doing equals, I'm going to use plus equals. Now this might look familiar if you've ever assigned an event handler in code. When we're assigning to event handlers, we use plus equals to assign another event handler to the event, and that way we can have multiple event handlers hooked up to a single event. Well, it turns out events are just special kinds of delegates, and this is a capability known as multicast capability. So we can assign multiple methods to a single delegate variable, and then when we invoke it, it will run all of those methods. Now we'll start out pretty small here. I'm just going to implement the first one where we're taking the average of all of the ratings of the people in the list. Now we want to put this into our output list. So I'll say output list .items .add, And then I'm going to use some link and more lambda expressions here. So we can say p.average. And then what are we going to average? We're going to average the rating value. Now I won't go into all of the details of what I'm doing here. All I'm going to say is link is really, really cool. If you want more information on this, you can look at the presentation materials I have on my website for Learn to Love Lambdas. In that, I talk a lot about link and encourage you to look at all of the extension methods that are available. So now that we have something assigned to our variable, let's actually use it. So if our action expander is expanded, we'll assign the action. And then we want to call act on people. So we want to invoke this delegate. Now this does want a list of person as a parameter. So let's go ahead and get that. So we'll say var people equals people dot get people. And this is just the static method that we looked at in part one of this series. So with that in place, we can pass a collection of person objects into our act on people method. So with this code in place, let's see what happens when we run our application. Now we will have to collapse our string handling section and open up our action section. But when I click process data, I see I actually do get an output that has the average rating of all of our items in our list. Now if I click it again, well, I get a second one and a third one. What's going on here? Now my first inclination is that I'm not clearing out the list box every time through. But if we look at our process data button click event handler, we see we do clear out the list every single time we click the button. What we're actually seeing here is our multicast capabilities of our delegate. If we look where we're assigning act on people, again, we're using plus equals, which means please add this to your collection of methods. Now we're not clearing this out anywhere. So each time we click the button, we add a new copy of this Lambda expression. Now it is pretty easy to get around this. In this case, we'll say act on people equals null. So we'll clear out any existing items before we assign something in this method. And if we run our application now, we'll see that when we click the button, we do get the one item. And if I click it again, I still just have that one item. Now we want to take full advantage of the multicast capabilities, which is why we have checkboxes in our UI. So let's go ahead and populate our assign action method. So we'll do this similar to our assign delegate method, but I'll use some predefined code to make this go faster. So I'm just going to copy and paste this in. So let's take a look at what we have here. First, we do set our act on people variable to null, so we clear out any existing assignments. And then based on our different option buttons, this time they're called option A, option B, option C, and option D, we assign a different action. 
So for our first one, again, we're getting the average rating from the people in our list and putting that into our output box. For our second item, we're taking the minimum start date from the items in our list and adding that to our output list. For the third one, we're ordering by rating and we're order by descending, which means the highest rated one will be on top. Then we're taking the first item in the list and grabbing its last name property and we're going to put that into a message box dot show. Finally, we're going to loop through all of the items in our list, take the first character of the last name, and output that to our console. That will show up in our output window at debug time. So let's see how this code runs. First, we'll start with the average rating, and we see we have that output. Then we can also have earliest start date, which in this case is 10-17-1975. We can choose Best Commander, which will give us a pop-up of Lister. And if we look on our list, he has a rating of 9 out of 10 stars. And then for first letters, let's look at our output window. And we see K-H-C-L-S-M-G. So those are the first letters of all of the last names of the people in our list. Now, since we have multicast capabilities, we can select more than one of these and we can see we get them all at the same time. One thing I want to point out is there's no magic threading happening here. These methods are being run sequentially in the order that they're added to our delegate. So to show this, let me go ahead and click the process data button. And notice we have the average rating, the earliest start date, and then we have a pop-up with Lister in it. Now, messagebox.show is a modal dialog. That means that our application stops processing until we clear this dialog. Now look at our output window. We haven't actually output the first letters of the last name yet. So if I click OK, then we see that that comes up. So all of these items run sequentially in the order that they're added to our delegate variable. And just to make this more clear, let's go ahead and move this one that has the modal dialog up to the top of our list. So this will be the first one that gets assigned. So now if we check all of the items off and click the process data button, we'll see that we have our pop-up, but none of the other methods have run yet. As soon as we click OK, we'll see our output list populates and our output window in our debugger also populates. Now this can lead to some interesting situations if one of our delegates throws an exception. For that, I'll refer you to some articles on my website, and you can get links to those articles by following the links in the video. Now, there is one other scenario we want to look at. What if we do not have anything selected and we click Process Data? Well, in this case, we get a runtime exception, and we see it's a null reference exception, and our additional information is object reference not set to an instance of an object. Now, why are we getting this? The reason we're getting this is the first thing we do when we assign our delegate is set act on people to null, which means if none of our checkboxes are checked, it just stays null. It doesn't have any assignment at all. So down here, when we try to invoke that delegate, there's no methods to invoke because it's null. So as a safety measure, we want to add a guard clause. So we'll say if act on people is not equal to null, then go ahead and invoke the delegate. But if it happens to be null, we'll just do nothing in this case. So we've seen several interesting things about delegates here. First, we saw that we do have a built-in action delegate that's very similar to func. The difference is that action returns void. So it can take between 0 and 16 parameters and just perform some kind of work. In this case, our parameter is a list of person, so we can create an action of list of person. And all delegates are multicast delegates. So in our case, we can assign multiple actions to the same variable. And then when we invoke it, all of the methods get run in order. Now, when we're talking about multicast delegates, usually we're working with things that do not return a value. The reason for that is if we do have a delegate that returns a value, it can only return a single result. So if we have multiple methods hooked up to one delegate, what happens? Well, it turns out the result of invoking that delegate will be the result of the last method to run. So again, if we really need those return values, 
Doing a multicast with a funk that returns a value really doesn't make sense. But when we're doing action, where we're just performing different pieces of work and not returning a value, it makes perfect sense for us to use the multicast functionality. In this case, we can hook up multiple methods to a single delegate variable. And then when we invoke it, all of those methods will run in order. And again, there's no real magic there. They just run on a single thread. So we've looked at several things in this series. First, we saw that a delegate is a type that defines a method signature. So it's a definition that includes parameters and a return type. And we saw how delegates can be useful in our code. They allow us to decouple our code so that we can extend a class without modifying it. And we saw that when we included the delegate to the toString method of our person class. That allows us to specify custom functionality of how to output this particular person class without having to modify the class itself. And when we're using methods as parameters, we're really using a functional programming style. Again, in the functional world, this is referred to as higher order functions, which are simply functions that take other functions as parameters. And today we saw how we could take advantage of multicast capabilities of delegates. We can create a single delegate variable and assign multiple methods to it. Then when we invoke the delegate, all of those methods run. And this is exactly what we see in callbacks and event handlers. We can assign multiple event handlers to a single event, and all of those will execute when that event gets fired. And finally, there's link. We didn't take a deep dive into link, but we did use it in a lot of our methods. Now, if you look at the link method signatures, you'll see a lot of them use func of t, t result. So for example, the where method has a parameter that's a func of t source bool. That means it will take t source, whatever the type is for our collection as a parameter, and we need to return a true false value to determine whether it's included in the filter. And again, wherever I see a func, I treat that as a big flashing sign to put your lambda expression here. For more information, please be sure to visit the website www.jeremybytes.com. There you will find the code download for these particular videos, as well as additional information on link, lambda expressions, and generic type parameters. Be sure to visit www.jeremybytes.com.